Now we've been finding a lot of roots of numbers and like the complex roots of numbers. And in this video, we're going to go over one more useful example. We're going to try and fi find out the roots of unity. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to try and find out all the complex roots to the equation z raised to the n is equal to 1. So we're going to try and find all n nth roots of 1. Now, although with the same protocol we've used in the last few videos, that, that'll still hold here. In this video, though, we're going to take a slightly different approach, just so you can see something new. So in this video, we're going to try and solve the roots of unity by using de Moivre's theorem. Now, in order to use de Moivre's theorem, we first need to get our number of interest in terms of cosine theta plus i sine theta. So let's try and do that out now. So z to the n is equal to 1. Let's just write that in polar form. We know that 1 is equal to e raised to the i of 2 pi. And I typically say times 2 pi n, but we already have an n here, so I'm just going to say 2 pi times k, where k is any integer. Now we can write this in terms of cosines and sines using our Euler's formula. So we know that this is equal to cosine of 2 pi k plus i times sine of 2 pi k. Now we're ready to take the nth root of everything. So we get that z is equal to 1 raised to the 1 over n power, which is all of this. I'm just going to say the bracket in. Well, I'll just rewrite it. Cosine of 2 pi k plus i times sine of 2 pi k all over to the 1 over n power. Now here's where we can use our de Moivre's theorem. Essentially, de Moivre's theorem, if you recall, is saying that if you have cosine of theta plus i sine theta raised to any exponent, that that's equal to cosine of theta times the exponent plus i times sine of theta times the exponent. So we know that our, all of our roots are equal to cosine of 2 pi k over n plus i times sine of 2 pi k over n, where n, if you recall, is just our exponent, and k is just any integer. Now, before we go on and take a look at like what the roots are for particular values of n, I want to point out three major points that we can uh, like gather from the general case that we have here. The first thing is that if we write a, uh, a complex number in terms of sines and cosines, it's typically of the form r times cosine of theta plus i times sine of theta. But we don't really have like a term of an r term. Our r is equal to 1, which means that the magnitude of all of the roots are equal to 1, which means if we were to plot all the roots out on our complex plane, that all have a radial distance of 1. Which means, in other words, that all roots lie on the unit, whoops, the unit circle. Which is just a fancy way of saying that for all the roots, r is equal to 1. Now, the other thing that I want, another, the second thing that I want to point out is that the argument, or this data, will have a very different value for different values of n. But k can be any integer. So, for regardless of uh, whatever n is, k can be equal to 0, which means that regardless of whatever n is, there's always going to be cosine of 0 plus i times sine of 0. And cosine of 0 plus i times sine of 0, that's just equal to 1. So the second thing we know is that z is equal to 1 is always going to be a root of uh, unity. It's always going to be a root of 1. Which means that if we were to plot out all the points on like a complex plane, that the point 1 comma 0 will always be there, regardless of whatever our n value is. Now the third point's uh, interesting. Now, as we know from our previous videos, we know that all the other roots, if we plot them out on the complex plane, they're going to be equally separated. In this case, they're going to be equally 
separated by an angle of 2 pi over n. Now, here's the main trick. Now we know a lot of things about like what all the roots will be in general. We know that they're all going to lie on the unit circle. We know that this point is always going to be there. And we know that all the other points are going to be equally separated by this angle. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at particular values of n and just do it out all graphically without any computation. We know that since this point will be here, the next point will be 2 pi over n away, and the next point will be 2 pi over n away from that, and so on and so on. So let's try and do those out. Let's try and find out what the nth roots of unity are going to be for different values of n. Now let's just start off with the most simplest case. Let's take a look at when n is equal to 1, which means we need to find the roots when z to the 1 is equal to 1, or just when z is equal to 1. Well, there's only going to be one solution, and that's just z is equal to 1. And if you notice, that satisfies all three criteria we have here. The point, uh, if we plot out that point, um, whoops. it's going to have a magnitude of 1 and going to be separated by 2 pi over 1. Actually, uh, let me just draw this out to help draw out a nice big graph. There, there, oops, okay, so let's say the imaginary axis, the real axis, and this circle here is the unit circle. So we know that in the case when n is equal to 1, we just get this point here, 1 comma 0. Now let's take a look at the case when n is equal to 2. Essentially, z squared is equal to 1, or z is equal to 1 to the 1 half power. Now if we're to use our de Moivre's theorem, we know that z is equal to cosine of 2 pi k over 2, plus i times sine of 2 pi k over 2. The 2's cancel in each argument and we get that each of the points are separated by an angle of pi. So 1 comma 0 is a point, and negative 1 comma 0 is a point, which means that our two roots are just 1 and negative 1, which we already know. Now let's go ahead and work on the case when n is equal to 3, our first, like, non-trivial case. So we need to find z, our roots, when is equal to 1 to the 1 third power, which is equal to cosine of 2 pi k over 3 plus i times sine of 2 pi k over 3. Now you can plug in, diff well, we can plug in different values of k now to try and figure out what the points are going to be. When k is equal to 0, we're going to get 1, 0 all over, all over again. When k is equal to 1, we're going to get that it's separated out by an angle of 2 pi over 3, which be somewhere around here, so not really roughly or so. And then when k is equal to 2, we're going to find that the next angle is at 4 pi over 3. So essentially, like before, we have, well, we're going to have three points that are all equally separated uh, on the unit circle by an angle of 2 pi over 3. And you can figure out what, like, the value of these points are in like Cartesian form by just evaluating out what these trig functions will be at those angles. But let's actually just move on to the next case when n is equal to 4. We're going to get that our four roots are going to be 1 to the 1 4 is equal to cosine of 2 pi k over 4, which we can just say is just pi over, oops, we can say that that's just pi over 2, or pi over 2 times k, plus i times sine of 2 pi k over 4, which is just pi over 2 times k. So when k is equal to 0, once again we have the point 1, 0, and then all the other points are going to be separated by an angle of pi over 2. So the next point is going to be here, actually at 
uh, 0 comma 1 the next point is going to be here the next point is going to be here so once again we have four points that are equally separated now let's just do one last example just to drive this home when the case when oops, n is equal to 5 we get z is equal to 1 to the 1 fifth power which is equal to cosine of 2 pi k over 5 plus i times sine of 2 pi k over 5 so when k is equal to 0 we're going to get oops, I don't know what this is doing here uh, we're going to get 1 comma 0 like we did before then we're going to get that the other points are spaced out by an angle of 2 pi over 5 which is right about here roughly here, roughly here, and roughly here. So, and once again you can find out what the actual values of these are in Cartesian form by just evaluating out what the cosines and sines will be. But I just want to show what it would be graphically. It's five points that are evenly distributed. And you can keep going for higher and higher values of n you'll find the same trends emerge as we found earlier that they're all going to be oops, on the unit circle they're all going to have uh, uh, they're all going to include the point 1 comma 0 and they're all going to be separated by an angle 2 pi over n now the reason why I really want to work on the particular case was the roots of unities because we see this a lot in like signals and systems this has a great application with um, one technique called the discrete Fourier transform this is used a lot in that and it has probably other applications elsewhere I'm assuming but that more or less wraps it up uh, hopefully see you in the next video